Where's Gio? Gio, are you here? I saw you earlier. Stand up, buddy. This is our mighty man of God. Go ahead. We had a, a beautiful uh, home-going service for his mom. How about your families? Your family, some of your family. I know your sis is here. Sis, would you stand to family members that are here with Gio? We want to recognize you tonight. Thank you for being with us. Amen. We love you guys. Your mom, Sandra, is in the presence of the Lord today celebrating upstairs, and uh, she's having a great party. And uh, so we look forward to connecting with her someday in heaven as well. But thank you guys for coming tonight. It means a lot to us. I need to introduce very quickly also um, uh, four mighty men of God um, who uh, embarked in a new season. A couple of them are actually working. And uh, so I don't know if we have our interns available. We launched City Life Interns this last week. And uh, if the interns could stand up. We got Brother Gio again, Hav, Christopher, Luke, amen. These guys are just awesome. And uh, so they're hanging out with Pastor John John and some other leaders throughout the week here. And uh, we love you guys. You're amazing. It's going to be a good season. Is that right? Amen. Did you guys bring your Bibles tonight to church by any chance? You can pull your Bible, your iPhone, your Android, whatever you got. It got quiet here. What's going on? <laughs> Yuji, is that you in the back over there? Come on, man. There's places for you guys to cram. Let's make some room for our friends that are coming in right now. Let's, if you got some folks or some tables or, goodness, help me, Jesus, some chairs at your table, some spots available, just to raise up, up, up a couple fingers there, invite them to come. Amen. Don't make me feel uncomfortable here. We say this, that a quiet church is a, oh, come on. We can, we, can, we can still breathe out loud here, and it's all good. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. So folks are gathering, gathering in. That's awesome. Hey, listen, um, tonight I'm going to try to be brief and amazing. I'm not sure how amazing, but I'll try to be brief and uh, share a couple of thoughts. And, and then towards the end, we're going to be talking a little bit about where the Lord has taken us as a local church. But Genesis chapter 15 is uh, where we're at. Uh, I'm reading from two primary texts tonight, Genesis 15, and then later we're going to, uh, into the New Testament as well. But let me just uh, kind of bring you up to speed on what was happening here. God had called out this guy by the name of Abram. Eventually he would have a name transformation. He would become Abraham. And uh, Abram was a, a great cat, cool guy. He had a cute girl, Sarah. She was a knockout. And uh, other, other kings, other people were checking her out because she was just beautiful. God made a, a promise uh, to Abraham that he was going to bless him. He made a covenant with God, like an agreement with God. And uh, he pulled him out of the land that he used to live in. He says, I'm taking you to a better place and to a promised land. And, uh, but through the journey, there were different hurdles, different challenges. And we pick it up right here in Genesis chapter 15. I'll read uh, just a few verses, one through six. It says this, sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision and he said to him, don't be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you and your reward will be great. Let me just pause right there and say this. When God forms a, a covenant or an agreement with his people, he's also committed to seeing that that covenant will be fulfilled. He's committed to our protection. He's committed to our sanity, to our peace. Amen. And there's always a reward. When we honor the Lord, he always takes care of us. Verse 2, but Abram replied, watch this. Oh, sovereign Lord. This is a, a guy who had a conversation with God, and all of a sudden he starts busting out some excuses. He says, Ab Abram replied, oh, sovereign Lord. What good are all your blessings when I don't even have a son? Since you've been given me, or since you've given me no children, Eliezer of Damascus, a servant in my household, is going to inherit all of my wealth, and you have given me no descendants of my own, so one of my servants will be my heir. Crazy, because um, always when it comes to us humans, we have a human response, and that is to consider our circumstances, and oftentimes, we respond or react to life based on what we see around us. But God sees things differently than we see it. Amen? Our circumstances don't dictate our destiny. Are you with me? Circumstances around us, if we were led by what the system says or what the world says or the media says, we would never leave from point A, let alone try to get to point Z. Amen? God's ways are higher than our ways. Verse 4 says, Then the Lord said to him, No, your servant will not be your heir, for you will have a son of your own who will be, who will be your heir. Then, watch this, it says, then the Lord took Abram outside. Can you say outside? Abram didn't sneak outside. God took him outside and said to him, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. 
Try it. Knock yourself out. Come outside and look up. What do you see, Abram? Look at the stars and try to count them. And then he goes on. That's how many descendants that you're going to have. It's kind of cool because in this conversation, God's, God's pretty smart. <laughs> he knows how people think. And he says, look, I'm, I'm, I'm about to introduce something to you. And, uh, but, but knock yourself out. Try to count the stars. Tr try to comprehend the blessings that I, ca that I have for you because uh, chances are you're just never going to fully get it. <laughs> when it comes to the ways of God, we, we, can, we can think about it all night long. We can ponder about it for weeks, for months, for years. But we will never fully comprehend God in our natural because he is supernatural. We've launched recently um, our School of Life class, and uh, we're taking uh, several students through a journey uh, into basic doctrines. What is it that we believe, and why do we believe it? And how can we stand firmly grounded on the Word of God? And so it's kind of a fun journey. Different students are, are attending. How many of our basic doctrine students are here tonight? Amen. Hands going up everywhere. We love you guys. When it comes to understanding God, one thing that we learned is that uh, we are finite beings and we've got limitations. God is an infinite being with no limitations whatsoever. Elena once, uh, several years back, she said, honey, I think the way that we can describe God is that his epicenter is everywhere and his circumference is absolutely nowhere. God has no borders. He's got no limitations. And yet, we're limited people. We're finite individuals. We can only know so much. We can only be at one place at one time. Uh, and yet God, he is omni everything. That means that he can be everywhere at the same time. He knows everything. He's got all the power. So check it out. God Almighty from heaven, he says, you know what? I, I don't want you to be distant from me, so I'm going to reveal myself to you. God comes into our reality. He steps, he steps into our box of limitations, if you will. That's the kind of God that we serve. We don't have to keep chasing after him. The truth is he comes and he chases after us. He finds us. In good days and in tough days, God comes and he finds us. God found you. Turn to person next and says, God found you. So here God's challenging Abram and says, check it out. Try to count the stars. There's absolutely no way that you're fully going to comprehend everything that I have for you. Verse 6, and Abram, it says this, he believed the Lord and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. He believed the Lord. Tonight I'm preaching um, this very short message. The title for the message is Eyes That See. Eyes That See. Because there's a lot of people with eyes wide open, but they're blind. Let me pray real quick and ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Lord, we love you so much and we thank you for this, this joyous day. Holy Spirit, we thank you that this is your church. We are your people. You're building this house and we're, we're just uh, delighted to be a part of what you're doing here. Thank you for our city. Father, thank you for San Francisco. Thank you for this region that you've allowed us to come and to live in and to do life in. Father, thank you that you've placed us at the gate of California, the, uh, one of the gates to our nation. What, a, what an opportunity and what a responsibility, God. Thank you so much. God, tonight I ask that you would come and you would encourage people. Father, for folks who are discouraged, I pray that tonight they'd be lifted up in their faith. Father, that they would sense that, God, you are for us, not against us. God, you're not a God that comes to condemn us or to judge us, but you come to embrace us and to love on us because we're your children, God, and we thank you so much for that. God, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and everybody said... Amen and amen. You know, recently we were traveling with our kids, and it was uh, kind of like that last little stretch where we could do a family vacation before school started. And uh, for those of you who are parents, um, when we say that we're taking the family on a vacation, we all understand that the vacation is for the kids. For mom and dad, it's a trip. Someone said it's a job. That's right. And uh, it's all about creating memories and uh, investing into their lives and hopefully not getting too... Uh, sunburned if you're out in the sun or whatever and uh and really we catered the week to to our kids just to love on them and to hang out and uh, and there's so many crazy memories that that come with it and uh it wasn't too long ago we were traveling to southern california and uh um, we're, we're traveling and uh after a while you've you've watched the dvds you've done the coloring books and uh, with with four kids oh come on that's that's work right there uh, having some of the younger ones that are restless ah, you know and i'm driving i said babe you're the co-pilot i can't go back there so you're gonna have to do with them she's like oh all right, well, let's switch let's switch i'll drive like that's all right i'll keep driving <laughs> and and uh so we try all kinds of different things my wife she's a genius and that uh she packs different little goodies, and every hour, if they behave, they get a new treat. Every hour, so they're motivated, especially for like those long 10-hour trips, right? And um, so we do all kinds of different games. And, 
After a while, some of the kids get a little restless and their prize isn't up for another 15 minutes and they're getting a little agitated. They start kicking daddy's seat. I'm like, come on. So Elena graciously, let's play a little game. And she would play games like, uh, I see with my little eyes. Nice spy game, correct? And then they would play, and then finally, you know, the youngest one, I want to play my turn. I see with my little eyes something. By the way, kids, they always say something blue, it's the sky, right, if it's during the day. And if it's nighttime, they'll see something bright, it's a light. No, all right. I see something green. Uh, is it the grass? No. Is it, uh, is it the fields? No. And we're going, is it the signs? No. And we're like, dang, where did the kid... What is it? And no one, no one can figure it out. It's Jaden's booger. I'm like, oh, bro, come on. <laughs> I see with my little eyes. We're traveling, and uh, kids were kind of being rambunctious, and it's been, it had been several hours. They're getting a little agitated before one of our stops. All of a sudden, quiet! A voice from the back. Jaden screams, be quiet, guys. I'm like, what's the deal, buddy? My foot's asleep. Don't wake it up. <laughs> True story. I mean, these are, these are my kids, our, our, our stories. We share all kinds of other crazy stories. I'll save that because it's supposed to be a brief and amazing service. I see with my little eyes. What is it that you see with your little eyes? Because when it comes to God's eyes, there's nothing little about his eyes. God sees everything, and he challenges us to think like he thinks and to see life as he sees. See, there's a lot of people, including Christians, who have eyes wide open, and yet they don't see. They don't see with the proper perspective. They allow things around them to dictate whether they're going to be happy or sad. I'll be honest, on the way here, my heart was a bit saddened. I'm like, are you kidding me? The cults are going to come into our house. After the whooping that we got in Seattle, they're going to come into our house and do that. That's just not right. I had to pray in the spirit. I think we need to have a prayer meeting for Coach Harbaugh and the Niners. Just say, Lord, we need some reinforcements. <laughs> we believe in healing. We need our players to get healed. But, uh, so I had to stir myself up. I was like, we're going to have a great time tonight. We're going to have great food. But the Niners lost. That's just kind of crazy. And from the natural perspective, thank you. From the natural perspective, oftentimes we can allow circumstances around us to dictate the condition of our heart, whether we're going to have a good day or we're going we're to have a tough day. What is it that you see? How do you see? Let me give you a couple quick thoughts about Abram and the stars. Three thoughts here. Basically, there's step out, look up, and take it in. But step out. Check this out. It says that the Lord, he led Abram outside. Here's some thoughts. There's all, a lot of us here that are pretty comfortable in our tent. Back in those days, Abram was living in a tent. Amen. And a tent represents a handful of different things. A tent can represent a place of safety, but it also can be a place of uh, excess comfort where we're, we're not compelled to move or to do anything. A tent can be a place where we go back into just kind of settling for the ordinary and never believing God for the extraordinary. A tent can be a place where, well, there's really no faith required because it's all good up in here. And a lot of people settle for the ordinary when God has thousands upon thousands of opportunities for blessings just outside. It's all about perspective. There's a lot of Christians that are happy to just be saved. Ooh, I'm going to heaven. I got myself a ticket to heaven. Woohoo! But yet I'm doing nothing for God right now. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. And yet there's a lot of Christians that live life just barely there. All about perspective. God led Abram out of the tent, and he said, consider everything out here. Look up. Here are a couple of thoughts when it comes to stepping out. Never dwell on your limitations or your lack. A lot of us, we look at what we're lacking, and rather than maximizing what God has already entrusted into our care, we're always whining and complaining. Talk about wine country. Yeah, there's lots of folks that whine all around us. Wah, wah, wah worse than a country album there's a lot of <laughs> country music album there's a lot of folks who like to complain about the not enoughs the cup is always half empty that's the tent that god says we got to knock that out come out from there that mindset it fossilizes people are you with me so far another one never settle for just the ordinary god has extraordinary things for us a third thought never allow comfort to dictate your destiny 
I wrote this a while back, that God, uh, God will often take us out of our comfort zone so that we're introduced into his trust zone. He'll pull us out of our comfort zone so that we're dependent upon him. He brings us into the trust zone. If you can't fulfill, excuse me, if you can fulfill the call of God on your life without his help, chances are that's not the call of God. God always brings us to a place where we can't do it out of our own strength. <laughs> Welcome to life. That's just the way that God designed it. He gets a kick out of us calling out to him, Dad, I need some help. Again, having four kids, we have opportunities for assistance where kids come and ask, hey, Dad, can you help me with homework or can you help me with that? I'll be honest again. And the, my wife is so gracious um, when they need homework. My, my daughter's in seventh grade. Don't even bother coming to talk to Dad because I don't remember math from back in those days. It's like, that's crazy. I can tell you stories, but I, don't ask me about algebra and trig and all the other stuff. The, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm going to call Auntie Lamia to come over and help. But um, I can help my kid in first grade, and that's good. So there's, there's times when they're asking for help, and, uh, and I, because they're asking for help, it's like, cool, I'll hang with them, and I'll help them out. If they never ask for help, I, I think I would be missing out on something. I want to be able to teach my kids how to ride their bicycles. Man, I heard about the guy who came home, and his neighbor had taught his kid how to ride the bike. Don't you do that. Don't you teach someone else's kid unless the parent, don't steal that opportunity from the parent because that is just a, that's a memory that is irreplaceable. You know what I'm saying? And God likes to be a father. He likes to be a daddy towards us. And yet, oftentimes we rely upon our comfort zone, our tent, and we just settle for just that. God says, I'm, I'm leading you out. The Bible says the righteous shall live by faith. It's not a suggestion. It's a requirement. If you truly are following after God, it's going to require faith. If there was no faith required, you're not truly a follower of Christ. Can I hear an amen? Now, I praise God for good moments. I praise God for, for victories and all that. But there are times in our journey where we're saying, God, I have no idea how this is going to play out. God, help me. Help. Even before we started the, this church, and uh, I just I, if I were to share with you just the trajectory, just the journey, all the steps along the way of what God has done, it's just incredible. And the more you experience miracles, the more you become convinced, wow, God's actually into this. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's just indeed not screw it up. But there were moments where I found like, I found myself emotionally just running into a wall going, God, I don't know how this is going to play out. I just have no idea. I've exhausted every brain cell in my brain. I have no idea what the solution is for this situation or problem. God, help, you know, and I'm crying out to God, and God's like, mm-hmm, that's the way, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I like it. He likes it that way. Where we call upon God, and God says, okay, move out of the way. I'll take over from here. Oh, come on, don't get too quiet with the preacher tonight. God wants us to step out, step out of those comfort zones, step out of those places. But the key is allow him to lead us out. If we step out out of turn and God didn't say to step out, we get ourselves in trouble. Amen. But when he calls, when he leads like he led Abram, uh, he has something to reveal to us. The second thought there is then look up. And uh, looking up, by the way, takes the focus off of who? Us. By looking up, focus is no longer on us but it's upon God, something much greater than us. When we look up, we say, wow, wow, you are God in heaven, and here I am on earth. I'm going to let my words be few, God, because you're crazy big. You're amazing. And then all of a sudden, things kind of come into perspective. King David in Psalms, he writes beautiful, you know, just beautiful pieces of poetry, and, and Bailey and Hobb would be proud because David was just a master at that of encapsulating color and art and everything, just expressing his heart. Though we read it in the English language, it's still powerful to us. And King David was a guy with a great call on his life. The prophet of God actually come over his life and just kind of poured oil on his head. <laughs> Anointed him in their culture. If, if the prophet or the, the man of God came and poured oil, that was significant. It referred to the calling of God. And it says that the presence of God was upon his life. David had the presence of God, the power of God on his life. And yet he found himself at times having to run. Run from opposition, run, uh, run from haters. Anybody ever, ever have some haters chase you down? Saying things, creating stories about you, persecuting you. Here David, the, the son of promise, the man with the call of God, the power of God in his life, he's running for his life, and he finds himself in different situations, for instance, hiding in a cave. There's a passage when we read in Psalms 121 
where he's actually trapped. He has gone into a ravine or a valley, and he's surrounded by these cliffs, and there's only one entrance and one exit, and he's blocked in. King Saul, the hater, the persecutor, he's coming to kill David. They used to be buddies, and he, he turned on him. He's coming to take David out, not on a date. He's coming to 86, her brother. David is trapped. There is no way out. And this is what he says in Psalms 121. He says, I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? Then he answers the, his own question. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heavens and earth. And then the rest of the psalm is just a beautiful chapter. Where do I lift up my eyes to? David didn't look at who was coming through that entrance. He was looking up. He saw something much greater. See, it was the same David that was fighting a Goliath many years before. And he saw a formidable uh, opponent, a giant, that in the natural there was no way for him to compete with that cat. He looked at this guy. This guy was huge. None of the Marines, none of the Navy SEALs, none of the warriors from the Israelite camp had the courage to go one-on-one -on -one with this giant by the name of Goliath. And yet, there was something different about David. Perspective, vision. What did he see? I'm convinced that he actually saw in his spirit, with eyes of faith, he saw, my God is bigger than this Goliath. My God is greater than this opposer. My God is greater than this guy who's just a fool, talking trash, saying stupid things. My God is much bigger than this. And he took Goliath and took him out. We know the story. Perspective. What is it that we see? David, he, li he, he looked up, understanding the maker of heavens and earth was looking down upon him. Come on, somebody, that's good. Isaiah 55, verse 9, it says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God just thinks on a whole different level than we do. Amen? We're so limited, but God has a much higher perspective. He sees the whole thing in 3D, 4D, 5D, however many Ds there are. He sees the whole thing in surround sound. His perspective is eternal, where ours is just so limited. Amen? Come on, somebody. I'm not going to pretend that I'm a great golfer. Um, I'm a great miniature golfer, though. When you got four kids, it's like you got to be creative. <laughs> so some pastors were inviting me to go hit the greens. I said, are there any other hackers coming? I'm a great caddy. Four. <laughs> I'm like, what was that noise? Chuck that thing. Just throw it. <laughs> Pick up the ball and throw it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but after you swung the clubs and you land the ball on the green, eventually, eventually in my case, it takes a while, you know, they max out the strokes at six. I hit six every time, every hole. Like, man, but you get on the green, and then they say something. They, there's kind of a rule when you're putting. When you're a few feet away from the hole, they say something to the effect of study the green. Look at the green. And then they say, see the ball go into the hole. They don't say put the ball into the hole. See it go into the hole. So you're analyzing your, your your perspective, you have to come from a different angle and you have to see the ups and downs and you have to kind of read the greens where they turn here, maybe they turn over there and maybe the velocity of that ball and you actually have to visualize and see the ball go in. It's a great spiritual principle, by the way, because before you can see in the natural, God says, you got to see with the eyes of faith first. Before you will step out and do something for God, you have to see it with the eyes of faith. You have to see it as God sees it. But the cool thing about it is that when it comes to God and when it comes to our journey with him, when God calls us out, very infrequently does he actually show us every step of the way. It's usually kind of like a one step at a time kind of revelation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? One day at a time, one week at a time. Very seldom does God actually just lay it out with like, oh, all, all these sequential steps. That's going to lead you to whatever. It's one day at a time just trusting him. The God that calls us is the God that then begins to speak to our hearts and begins to show us through spiritual eyes, through the eyes of faith, what the next step is. What is the next step for us? See, God doesn't, God doesn't hide his purposes from us. He enjoys revealing them to us. He looks for us to call upon him. Are you with me so far? <laughs> so the first step, again, is we got to step out of that tent or the cave or that place of comfort. Then we got to look up. We got to have a different perspective. Then we got to say, God, show me to see, help me to see 
with your eyes of faith. Help me to see with the eyes of the heart. And then the third thought real quick is then we got to take it in. It says that Abram, he believed the Lord, and then it was counted to him as righteousness because of his faith. He believed the Lord. He came out. He saw. He didn't comprehend. He couldn't figure it out in the natural, but he believed. God, I'm not sure how this is going to play out. My wife and I, we've been trying to have kids for a while. Not my wife and I, we have four. But Abram didn't have any kids. I'm not sure how this is going to be playing out. And I don't even have one kid. I don't have one baby yet. And you're telling me that my descendants are going to be like the stars around me? That doesn't make sense. But at your word, see, when it comes to our journey with God, usually it, they, it, it just simply doesn't make sense. My friend, if you're watching us online, oftentimes when God speaks to us, things don't compute. They won't make sense. It has to move from knowledge and intellect into a place of conviction and faith. Trust is not here, but it's right here. Come on, somebody. Trust is not here. It's right here. That's why oftentimes our minds, we just don't get it. Or people praying in the spirit, it's like, that sounds crazy. Why are they praying like that? That sounds so crazy because the mind doesn't get it, but the spirit sure does. Amen. Amen. So you got to take it in. The way I like to say it is you got to believe it, you got to own it, and you got to live it. You got to believe it. Believe what? Believe God's word. Believe his promises for you. Believe his track record, meaning his faithfulness. He hasn't let you down yet. Why would he start now? If he spoke something, he's going to fulfill that in your life. Believe it. You can take that to the bank. You can cash that promise right there. When God speaks something, he's faithful to fulfill it. The second thing is you got to own it, man. Personalize it. Just put your name on that promise. That's mine. <laughs> There's a scripture in the New Testament that says this. All of God's promises for me or for us in Christ Jesus, they are yes and what? Maybe, perhaps. No, they're yes and an emphatic amen. It's a done deal. Signed, sealed, delivered. I don't know what's happened to me. These songs have come up. <laughs> That's crazy. That's just crazy. Excuse me there. Um. You believe it, and if you actually believe it, you live it. Like, like in James, it says, I'll show you my faith by my works. I'm not just going to be a talker. You, you want to you test and challenge my faith? Check it. I'll live it. I will do it. I'm not going to just be a talker. I'm going to be one who lives it. If you truly believe in God, when God speaks to you, when God quickens that word, that truth, that nugget, that revelation in your heart, you can't help but do something. People call my wife and I crazy. And that's strange because usually I'm the only crazy one, but they called her crazy. Okay. <laughs> Say, are you crazy? You're part of a great church. There's a great church in the East Bay. Man, they're doing great things. Man, we spent 16, almost 17 years part of a dream team, a wonderful church, phenomenal people. Great church, great community, great soccer programs, great schools for our kids. And they're saying, you've been smoking something about Pastor John, are you sniffing on something crazy? Are you just crazy? Are you out of your mind? Why would you leave everything and go into San Francisco? Don't you know what they stand for there? I said, mm-hmm, the Niners and the Giants. What else? <laughs> Pastors of ministries, other folks were inviting us, whining and dining us to go and hang out and come on staff with them and play ball with them, figuratively speaking, literally speaking, hanging out. Like, man, great opportunities were coming and I remember one person just said, you, you guys are crazy, man. I said, we would be crazy not to go because in the middle of God's will, that's where there's peace. In the middle of God's will, that's where there's fulfillment. There, though there could be storms and things may not add up, things may not make sense at times, but when you're in the middle of God's will, there's no better place to be. You can buy me. You can pay however, fill in the blank check. There is no way that you could buy us out of our inheritance because this is where the Lord's called us to come to. These are the people. These are the communities that God has called us to come and to give our lives and to just serve and just to do life together. That's the greatest place to be. They, they, they thought we were crazy. It would be crazy not to come. And our call, our portion, isn't just for the city. It starts here. It starts in San Francisco. But God's called us to reach communities all throughout the Bay Area, all throughout California, throughout the nation and the nations of the world. From this house, we're, gonna, we're believing. God called us to be a church-planting church. And I don't have to prophesy this because we've already declared it. We believe it. But from this house, many church plants will come forth. We will send teams. It'll be painful, but we're going to send the best 
all over the place. We're going to plant churches all throughout. Why? Because the kingdom of God is advancing and we're part, we're along for the ride. We're just saying, Lord, if you can use anything, God, use us. We're not superstars. We're not crazy like, wow, celebrity Christians. We're just ordinary people that put on their pants one leg at a time. It's crazy. And if you saw how frail and how messed up this guy can be, it's like, dude, that is a cosmic joke. There must be a God because if he can work with that, he is amazing. Come on, somebody. God doesn't look for superstars. He looks for people that just have an available heart. We're great candidates. Mark Batterson, one of my favorite authors right now, writing great books. He has a quote. He says, God doesn't listen to prayers that we can fulfill on our own. He only listens to the prayers that he can accomplish alone. That's a good quote right there. When we pray prayers that are just kind of like, meh, kind of prayers, they don't count. God says, well, you don't need me for that. You can do that yourself. Remember, uh, some of you heard me share this story about a great man of faith who, who graduated. He's in heaven now. His name is Savelle Phillips. He went to a conference, and he heard this lady talk about how she could hear the voice of God so closely. They were tight. Like this girl and the Holy Spirit, it's like she could hear him with an audible voice. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? That's awesome. And um, so she's talking about how she includes the Holy Spirit in everything she does. And she was just so impassionated with this and she said for instance in the morning when i get up i get up and i say good morning jesus and then i forget if she went and brushed her hair comb you know combed her hair brush her teeth brush her hair, whatever one of those um but eventually she would walk into the closet she had a walk-in closet and she says before she turned the light on holy spirit what outfit should i wear today and then the holy spirit would say oh why don't you wear the pink one with the yellow bow or whatever <laughs> turn the light on thank you and Pastor Savell was so moved by this. It's like, wow, that is just so close. It's amazing. So he tried it. He came home, says, Lord, I'm starting from this day forward. I'm including you in everything. He gets up that morning, ha, walks towards the closet. Before he turns the light on, he says, Holy Spirit, should I wear the brown suit or the blue suit? Holy Spirit says, shut up, boy. I'm not your mama. <laughs> Whoa. See, for God, for for different ones of us, God will speak in different ways. <laughs> for different ones of us, God has a different kind of language. And what works for one person can be very different for others of us. Amen. Uh, this one lady came through one time. She says, I feel like the presence of the Lord. It's like liquid fire coming through. I said, dang, that sounds like heartburn to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I had some really hot tamales or something. It's like, oh, look a fuego. <laughs> God speaks to all of us differently. Why? Because we're unique individuals. We can't compare our experiences with one another necessarily. God has a tailor-made relationship for all of us. And he wants to be included in everything we do. That's why he says, if he tells you, all right, all right, should I have a single shot or a double shot of espresso? Come on, somebody. I'm about coffee right now. Coffee. Um, if that's how close you guys are, that's cool. But um, brown suit, blue suit, whatever. Whatever he speaks to you, flow with that right there. But let's not kind of be frustrated with one another if God has different ways of expressing himself. One thing we do all have in common, and that is this. When it comes to his prophetic destiny for us, it requires lots of prayer. We can't do it. Um, our sending church, before they sent us out here, the entire church prayed and fasted for 40 days. There's only a few of us that were coming here, but for 40 days they were praying and fasting because anything that comes of God must be birthed through prayer. Praying, God, we need, we need your grace. We need your faithfulness. We need your presence. Amen? So we pray, and we pray, and we keep on praying. Here's another thought real quickly. Travel with me to the New Testament. I've got about four minutes, and then it's a wrap. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8, verses 22 through 26, and it says this. When they arrived, this is Jesus and the disciples, when they arrived at Bethsaida, Remember, Beth, I was telling you a while ago that the, that the word Beth, the name Beth in the Bible means what again? House. So Bethlehem, Bethel, the house of God, all these different names with Beth. It means the house of something. So they came in, arrived at Bethsaida, which means the house of fish. This is a village where a lot of fishermen uh, came from. Matter of fact, the disciples, Peter, uh, his, his brother Andrew, James and John, they were all homeboys from this town right here. So they're kind of coming back to this town. And, and it says that some people brought a blind man to Jesus, and they begged him to touch the man and to heal him. Jesus took the blind man by the hand, and watch this, and he 
led him. Oh, you can read that right there. Is that on the screen? And he did what? And he, he led him what? Out from where? Oh, let, let's say that again because Jesus has compassion upon this man and he leads him out. You're not staying in this tent any longer. You're not staying in this condition any longer. You're not going to be staying in this kind of a bubble any longer. I am leading you out to do a new thing. Jesus, matter of fact, let me throw my two cents. Why is it that Jesus did this? These, these people were like, oh, look, here's Jesus, and he can heal people. And it's like we read it, and we skim through it, and oftentimes it's like, wow, those people were so nice. They wanted to see this blind guy healed. And Jesus chooses to lead him out to do the miracle. Why did he do that? Why, why would Jesus do that? See, my theory, and the Bible doesn't explicitly say it like this, but my theory is this. These people were in it for the man. They were in it for the show. They weren't in it for the, for, for the sake of the individual. They wanted a Holy Ghost show. Come on, uh, come on, somebody. They wanted a Pentecostal kind of like expression. And they're like, wow, do that thing again, Jesus. You've been like touching people and doing miracles. Do that thing again. We like that. We like that. We're going to kill you in a few weeks, but we like that. We're going to like team up against you and crucify on our cross. But we like the show. We like the free meals. We like the fish and chips. We like all that fun religious stuff. We're not going to change, but we like to be entertained by that. A different kind of attitude. And Jesus says, you know what? I'm taking you out from this. And I'll explain it because it says this. He takes him out. Then he does something. He hawks a loogie, man. Big one. That's what it says. It's right there. Then, hawking a loogie on the man's eyes, he, let his, he laid his hands on him and he asked, can you see anything now? Not yet. <laughs> so that he, he spit in the man's eyes. Then he laid hands on him and he asked, can you see anything now? And this is what's cool, verse 24. The man looked around and, and he said, yes, I, he said, I, I can. I see people, but, um, but I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. He could see. But by the way, how did he know that there were trees? Because his vision was being restored. At one point, he could see. But his eyes had become dim. He had become blind. Man, if you hang around the people that were setting him up, you become blind too. Oh, come on, somebody. Something would get on your eyes right there. Some kind of that funky spirit. It just kind of rubs off, rubs off on people. The spirit of religion and religiosity and apathy and unbelief. You hang around that kind of crowd for a while, it starts blinding you. It starts causing your senses in the things of God to become dull or dim. You lose your sensitivity. Am I preaching to somebody here? Jesus says, uh-uh, I'm not leaving you here. I'm going to help you. I'm going to escort you away from that right there. I'm going to bring you into something new. He spits into the man's eyes, and then he touches him a second time. After the second time, he could see clearly. I believe that God is speaking to even folks that came tonight where perhaps your vision has become a little dim. A little, the focus has become maybe not so crisp as it used to be. For whatever reason, the troubles of the world, the pressures of life, the expectations of people, perhaps poor choices in our past days, whatever it could be for you, there are some that came tonight and your vision needs to be restored. I got good news for you. The same Jesus that opened this man's eyes, he can open your eyes too. We're talking about being able to see with the eyes that God gives us. You don't have to roam this planet along, uh, alone, uh, all along and just trying to figure things out on your own. You don't have to just keep chasing the trends, chasing the fads, uh, trying to keep up with all the different things that are going on. Uh, you don't have to keep running after those things. You can actually live life with purpose. You can see if you allow God to restore vision. We're talking about eyes that can see. The Bible says that the blind can't lead the blind, but you come to church oftentimes, there's a lot of good people with great intentions. They're still blind. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. The ultimate leader is Jesus. People will let you down. Here at City Life Church, we love God. We love people. But you stick around long enough, people are going to hurt you. They're going to tick you off. They're going to offend you. They're going to take your parking space in the back parking lot or whatever. They're, <laughs> they're going to, whatever, they're going to cut in line. People will disappoint you. Stick around. You have your opportunity too. And you know what? Probably the person that will offend you the most this crazy cat right here, this white bald guy right here, chances are you stick around. I'm going to push the wrong button. I'm going to say the wrong, wrong thing at the wrong time. 
but we also have a lot of grace here, a lot of mercy. He who extends mercy receives mercy. We like to, to just, just be real with one another, say, you know what, I'm going to apologize in advance. Sorry in advance, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurt you. <laughs> Two thoughts here. Jesus tells the guy, on your way back, let me read verse 25. Then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again, and he, his eyes were open. His sight was completely restored, and he could see everything clearly. And Jesus sent him away saying, don't go back into the village on your way home. Don't go back into that place. Two thoughts. God restores vision. Number two, he tells us, don't go back. Don't, don't go back. You don't have to go back. If you go back, that was your choice. God doesn't ask you to go back. If he called you out, he doesn't send you back. Come on, somebody. If he calls you out, births you out, he doesn't send you back to captivity. He doesn't send you back. It's not a mission strip to go back there. That's not your portion. God will use someone else. You don't have to go back to that cave. You don't have to go back to that place. But, but, but what about those people? God will, will, will use the right people to influence them. Amen? Come on, somebody. And then it says Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize. Hebrews 12, 2, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. When it comes to your, your journey, yeah, we make mistakes. I'm guilty as charged. When it comes to making mistakes, I've made plenty, probably more than most of you here. But we get back up. God continues to come out after us, and he pulls us back up. There's hope for all of us. And then the key isn't, try to, it, it isn't trying to be righteous and good and perfect every day. The key is to fix our eyes on Jesus. Just fix your eyes on Jesus. I'm going to invite uh, Pastor Elena to come. If we can bring a couple stools re re real quick. I want to share a couple thoughts with you. Speaking about, this is the message portion. I want to talk a little bit about city life. And again, if you're a guest with us tonight, thanks for hanging out with us. This is a bit of our, our, our family chat right here because... Um, a little bit later when we have our meals and prizes, we're going to be showing a slideshow, and uh, it's going to be several minutes long, and uh, it's going to just kind of show the trajectory, the journey for the last 12 months, and uh, what a journey it's been already. It's been incredible. But when it comes to City Life Church, it's not about a person or two or a family. It's about a community of people. When it comes to City Life Church, it's not about the lead pastor or the quote-unquote first lady Someone says, you're the head of the house. She's the neck that turns the head. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but when it comes to City Life Church, um, it's not about just a couple of us. It's about a community. It's about a team. Keys and Catherine, our families came together. And then we had a little bit of influence on a few people that were tagging along with us. And the Lord began to do a beautiful thing. And he blended two families that were just kind of sputtering, just kind of like learning how to crawl. And he says, you know what? I'm going to do a new thing brought us we could not have in a thousand years scripted the story the way that god had purposed all of a sudden i had no friends in san francisco i had tried i told keys man i'm, I'm trying to reach out to pastors and no one seems to respond they, they don't reply to my emails my phone calls and i'm sure they're busy and all that and i'm going to choose not to become offended come on because it's a choice but as the lord brought us together i said keys i don't know how this is going to play out but man i have a friend in the city and uh, we, I remember just us hugging and, and just kind of like saying, all right, how's this going to play out? We have no idea. But the Lord began to quickly surround us with people. And we, 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 we continued to just see the faithfulness of God, of God bringing different folks in. See, God had placed a dream in our hearts several years back that he was going to build the church of San Francisco. And the presence of God was going to be so felt here that entire communities were going to be impacted, not because of people, but because of the presence of God. I said, God, what strategy are you going to give us? He says, just build me an altar. I'll show up. That's why tonight when we we're praying, we're just like, let's just build him an altar right now. That means that we're, we're preparing a place for him to come and to just kind of show up. In our culture today, it's like an altar? What the heck is that, dude? <laughs> um, in Old Testament days, they would build altars to worship God. They would offer sacrifices. We choose to offer God sacrifices. We, our lives, our lifestyles, they're like living sacrifices. Every day we choose to honor the Lord that way. So God gave us a strategy that just build altars and I will come. So we began to dream. We began to bring our, our kids into the city. 
to be honest, my wife, you know, she loved uh, uh, the pier, uh, Pier 39 and, and Embarcadero and all the fun touristy stuff. And it's like, but there's more to San Francisco than just the touristy spot. So we began to explore. We began to travel. For a few years, we'd come every week, and we would travel through the streets praying. And my heart began to just melt. We'd, we'd drive into different neighborhoods, and people would give us, like, this strange look, like, what are you doing here? And I was like, hey, you know, and, uh, but the love of God, God just began to just kind of replace our selfish hearts and began to place his heart within us for the city. The city is not the monuments, it's the people, our communities, a diverse city, a rich city with heritage, with history, with hurt, with pain, with violence, with victories, with pride, with everything. A city that exports perversion around the world, but a city that is primed for revival at the same time. God began to give us a passion for our city. We said, God, how are you going to do this? Because in the natural, we don't know how it's going to play out. <laughs> we just don't know how. And, uh, but God, we have a word that you said you're going to build your house. So we came and about eight people from the East Bay said, you know what? We're willing to come and tag along and help. We're willing to sell our houses, get new jobs, do whatever. We're out. We're in this to win it. That's not the, the, the Disney program thing, in it to win it, not that one. Um, so we came, and then other teams came from other churches to help us, part of our, what we call the launch team. They're like, like, let's get these guys jump-started. And people started coming from all over the place. But then the Lord began to connect different individuals. And I don't know how you found us, but you found us. And the crazy thing about it is that you kept coming back. That's crazy. <laughs> and we fell in love with the people that God brought us. Today we stand a year later, and we look around, and we say, wow, memories, treasures. Even friends that are passing through for months, Andy and I develop a great friendship, and he's going back down under in like, what, a week, two weeks? But, man, we, we are lifelong friends now. God joined us together as friends, and hopefully he'll keep coming back every year. Is that right? <laughs> and uh, um, look at what the Lord's doing. And uh, I want to share. Uh, do we have that, that phone? Is it ready to go? Before we came, this is what we dreamt for, for the city of San Francisco. This is kind of what we envisioned. We said, God. We don't want to be a church that is just kind of stale, boring, and like a bunch of white folks from the East Bay. But we want to have a Costco kind of church. Because when you go to Costco, you see red and yellow, black and white, tall, short, skinny, large, rich, poor. We see everything. The nations come to Costco, and they walk out with big portions, <laughs> large quantities. We want to have, I said, God, we want to have a Costco. It's not, it's, there's no name brand to Costco. Costco, it's not a like, ooh, so sophisticated. No, Costco is just simple. But folks leave with plenty. I said, our dream is to see a church where the presence of God is so felt. Where they come, folks come from every different background, and they leave with plenty. And they keep coming back, and they want to keep coming back, and they keep bringing others. That's the kind of church that we are dreaming of. A church of influence. But more than influence, a church that has genuine impact. We don't want to just show up and do our thing. We want to be a blessing to our city, to our communities, to the region. We want to impact lives. Amen. We're asking God, God, show us. Keys and I were just hanging out this week. He was giving me a tour of, of Everett, Everett School. And he and I are dreaming. And he's dreaming. I'm dreaming. Like, man, there are hundreds of kids, junior high kids there. I said, this is a year that junior high ministry is going to explode in our church. My daughter had a birthday this week. Fifteen kids were hanging out in our living room. I go, yeah, the youth ministry has begun. Indeed, we're going to throw a party next month, and we're going to have a bunch of kids coming from everywhere, and it's going to be amazing. We want to reach everyone. We want to be an impact. Come on. So we're going to um, show or actually encourage you to take about two minutes. Um, we were dreaming all these different things, and we were jotting down these different things, and we hadn't shared the intricacies of these dreams that God had placed in our hearts with anyone. Out of nowhere, my wife and I were ministering in a wonderful church up in Oregon and uh, part of a, a prophetic team. On the last night, the last service there, one of the prophets, his name is uh, Mark Strong, uh, he came and he says, hey, Jonathan, and he turns it around. Instead of me ministering over somebody, he turns around and says, where's your wife? And he had a word from the Lord for us before we came to plant. Check it out. Just listen real quick. It's two minutes. All right. Ooh. Hallelujah. The Lord says, I am hew hewing out a new well. I'm hewing out a well that is deep, that runs 
from the generations, mm. but also a will that would have a new flavor. Mm. For I'm about to unfold something new in your lives that will call you to say, Lord, this tastes so good. Lord, this tastes so wonderful. But I will use you to touch a city. I'm placing a city in you. I'm placing multitudes in you. I'm placing thousands in you, saith the Lord. For you will train, I just I see there, you will train many, many leaders. There will be thousands of leaders that you will train. There will be thousands of people that will be members of your church when that day comes. Yes, you will start off, it will be like riding a bike and on the training wheels and those type of things. Uh, but there will come a day when there will be a literal explosion, saith the Lord. Uh, and I will draw the Hispanic. I will draw the whites. I will draw the blacks. I will draw the Asians, saith the Lord. Uh, and I will create a multi-ethnic, multi-dynamic expression uh, and you will be a man and a woman that will love them and I will send people even from other nations uh, that will partner with you, oh man. Uh, I just see this you know, it's down the road uh, but you'll be a man that will be over churches. Uh, people will come to you in the days ahead and they will say, will you shepherd us? Will you pastor us? Uh, but oh man, know this, that in the years and days to come I will build you uh, and I will create a father and a mother heart in your spirit. Uh, I will call. You will know what it is to be broken. Uh, you will know what it is to go through days of discouragement and hardship. Uh, but also you will know the tenacity of the Lord. Yeah. You will know how to stand. Uh, and out of your own brokenness and out of your own experience, uh, I will build a message uh, that will literally touch nations, saith the Lord. Uh, I'm going to cause your voices to be heard uh, throughout the land. Uh, yea, over the airways. Yea, over the internet. Internet, yea, over the podcast, yea, over in the other mediums that shall come forth that have not even been developed yet. Uh, I will cause your voice to be heard, uh, and you are to believe God for just harvest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Harvest. Yes. Uh -huh. Harvest. Lord says thousands of souls. Mm -hmm. Come on, thousands of souls. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, I want to come to your church. Hallelujah. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But the Lord says the water that runs from the well shall meet the need of a generation and multitudes, <laughs> says the Lord. This is no new word to you. This is no new thing to you. For I've already built this and placed this deep within your spirit. But tonight I come to confirm and I come to breathe upon the ambers and tell you it should be so, said the Lord, for it is my word and I have spoken it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's pretty awesome. Let's give Jesus a clap, huh? How about that? Thank you, Jesus. So God, God places dreams within our hearts, not to puff us up or to cause us to think that we're, ooh, all that in the bag of chips. But we're saying, God, if you can do this, that is just so beyond us. There's nothing in the natural that we can do. But if you want to do this, Lord, we make ourselves available. And then God began to just continue to drop new dreams, new ideas. For the next several weeks, we're going to be sharing on vision and uh, perspective, talking about how to see as God uh, would show us. And uh, the theme for this whole next season is about positioning because I, I preached a word a couple weeks ago about being those who are at the gates of the city. There's a great responsibility for our church to team up with the other elders of this city at the gateway into our state, into the nation. They say that as San Francisco goes, goes the nation. If we can influence the politics and all the cultural things in our nation, I believe that there can be a revival that comes from even this region that will affect the nation and the nations of the world. I'm just saying, Lord, do your thing. We don't want to screw it up, but thank you for allowing us to be a part of the ride. So from the bottom of our hearts, we want to thank you for uh, teaming up with City Life Church. As the Lord has brought different ones of us, I look throughout this room and I, I just, my heart melts. Folks like Rodney, just a true a brother, a man of God. And I keep going all throughout. I see tables and friends and folks that God's connecting. And uh, we say it like this. You come once, you're a guest. You come a second time, you're a second time guest. You come three times, you're family. And uh, so we, uh, we love you guys. City Life Church, we're excited for what the Lord's doing. Pastor Elena, any other final thoughts before we eat food? Yeah. So we're going to pray a blessing over the food. 
later as the food is served. Um, when, you, when you grab your plate, all the plates are there at the table. Um, as you come through, they're, they're going to give you a raffle ticket. We're giving away a lot of different prizes tonight from Starbucks cards to iPad minis to TVs to uh, 49er tickets to you name it, restaurants, you name it. It's going to be fun. So stick around. We're going to be having about a, I don't know, 15, 20-minute video slideshow of different activities. This year has gone by quick. There are moments where it was like heck along, but then there are moments where it's like, wow, <laughs> All of this has happened, and it's been amazing. And uh, I'm living the best days of my life right now because you guys are part of the life, and uh, we love it. Can we tell you how much we love you? Let's just give each other a clap right now. Amen. <laughs> love you guys. So I'm going to pray a blessing over our food. Again, you'll, you'll pick up your plates there, and uh, we got plenty of time to chill, so there's no huge hurry. Elena's telling me something about the kids. Just don't forget to pick up your kids. That's all. <laughs> Half of our church is upstairs. If you guys didn't know that, half of our church, we've got a dream team of leaders up there helping. And uh, so as we're dismissed here, you feel free to go pick up our kids. There's lots of food for everyone. Don't forget the raffle ticket. Let me pray a blessing over the food real quick. Jesus, we love you. Father, thank you for um, just your goodness, God. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for the work that you're doing in our lives. Father, th this is much more than just a building. It's, we are, uh, this is about lives that you're bringing together, Lord, and we're growing in you and it's a family that is blossoming, God. And, Lord, we thank you for connecting our hearts and, and, and bringing us from so many different backgrounds together to be a part of one family. We say thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray that you bless each one here tonight. May our hearts be encouraged with you. Father, you who began a good work, you're faithful to complete it. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we pray blessing over the food. Bless the hands that prepared of that catering company. And, uh, Lord, let the party begin here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we got some interns out there that are going to be helping serve you as well. So you can make your way out. There's going to be some music playing, your plates and eating where they're all there. Amen. Yeah. Our cafe will be opening up as well. So lattes, whatever you need, there's, there's that available as well. Amen. Hey, families, if you have children upstairs, would you please go ahead and get your children? We want to have our nursery workers be able to come and join the party as well. So if you have children upstairs, please go and rescue the children's workers so they can come join the party as well. Thank you.
the one made by Jason Taylor in the dark with the impact of a blade that aims for Lucifer. Now I gather who to slay, and slay to the death, and now I gather who to slay. Bless me, dear commander, dear commander, when time is up, I garner and the great return of your armor. Hit me in another way to witness, way that I'm clear of the thing that I pray to hear in my way. Thank you. 
Oh, you're not coming up here. Go back. Is everybody enjoying their food tonight? Can I get an amen for some awesome grub in the house tonight? You want your mic? We just want to make sure that everybody got a raffle ticket. So if you did not get a raffle ticket and you are over the age of, I don't know, not a mini child. 16 and older. If you didn't get a raffle ticket, 12 and older. If you didn't get a raffle ticket, go ahead and raise your hand. We're going to come around with some raffle tickets. Sophia, put your hand down. You're three and a half. Marquise. Don't lie. If you lie, you're in the house of God still. I'm just saying. Is that everybody? Last call, raffle tickets. Raise your hand really high if you didn't get one. Everybody good? Anybody in the bathroom? Can you hear my voice? <laughs> Lamia will bring you a ticket in the bathroom if you need one. You're going to do it? Yeah. 
So we like to bless people. We have a lot of really awesome gift cards. We've got, psh, I don't know, everything you could imagine in this envelope here. We also have some really fun big prizes coming up towards the end. So if you want to get your raffle ticket ready, I know you've got kids and you're eating, but try and find your raffle ticket. We're going to be pulling some numbers. Sam the man. We want to get our first one. So make sure you have it. Reach in that bottomless pit called a purse. Find it. I got my number. All right, everybody. Can you, can you turn that right? What do we got? Seven, seven, two, seven, two. Oh, I should tell you what the prize is, right? <laughs> oh, instant happiness. Amen. That's Chipotle. So pray real hard as we give you the last number. What's the last number, Sam? Trace. Three. Who's got a number? Woo! Beth. Give it up for Beth. You have instant happiness. Look at that. She loves Chipotle, people. Give it up. Woo! Amazing. Congratulations. We need your ticket back. Yeah, let's verify the ticket number. Mm-hmm. She's, she's, she's not lying, guys. She's not going to get smited right now. We do another one? All right, we got another prize coming up. Ooh, iTunes. Download some good worship music. What do we got? What do we got? Seven, seven, two, seven. Hold on, let me get my number out. No. Six. The prize, again, is iTunes. $15 iTunes gift card. Last number is? Four. Four. Woo, Jonathan, awesome. Good job, coming out from the East Bay, got his stuff. And we're gonna do one more for the, oh, look at, it's got the fall. I love fall. Does anybody else love fall as much as I do? We got a Starbucks gift card coming up. Glorious pumpkin spice latte, caramel brulee. I'm just claiming it now. <laughs> All right, we got seven, seven, two, seven, seven, nine, nine. Starbucks, Starbucks. Is that Josh? No. Sit down. Oh, Gio, your sister got it. Woo! Give it up for Gio's sister. She is awesome. Let's verify those numbers. All right. What's your name again? Ariana. Give it up for Ariana. She's legit. All right, go ahead and start interceding. We're going to let you guys get back to eating. We're going to come back to some more prizes. And we're going to roll the video.
Everybody get up if you love him.
All right. That's a long video. Good job. Just the trajectory here, the journey this last year. That's crazy. Thank you all for sending the pictures. Hey, um, we're going to do something real quick. We got a bunch of prizes that we need to give. We also have some desserts that we're going to be uh, serving as well, some cheesecake, and uh, we got some sweets. You know what I'm saying? But before we do that, I just want to recognize a handful of people. Um, one of our core values here at City Life Church is that it's... Uh, it's really all about team. It's all about team. And uh, a great team is a team that doesn't have to have a bunch of superstars, but it has a bunch of willing people that are just playing their part. And uh, we got folks behind the scenes. We got, we got inc just an incredible plethora of folks. I want to say thank you to folks who became great friends of mine. Um, not only have they refreshed our hands, they, they told us before we launched that they felt like the Lord says, hey, we want to come and just team up with you guys and serve you and help you. Um, not only have they done a phenomenal job with our worship team and leading our worship department, but they become close friends of ours. And that we needed some other just seasoned veterans in the faith to stand with us. And uh, uh, Pat and Agata, where are you guys, man? Could you stand real quick? Love you guys. Absolutely a joy. Um, true friends, man, and their family, you know, all of their kids just sacrificially serving, coming, and just uh, loving on us and helping raise up a tremendous worship team. Uh, there's a prophetic word over this house that there's going to be a sound that comes from this house, birthed by the Spirit of God, that will be original, it will be authentic, it will be a combination and a reflection of our communities of San Francisco. Come on, somebody. It's going to be a new sound. It's going to honor the Lord. It's going to be like incense that goes up into the heavenlies. And uh, so we're, we're just excited to see what the Lord's doing. Thank you guys so much. And uh, I want to thank all of our children's ministry directors. We've got four directors that we started with just like two classes. Now we've got four different classes. As you can tell, we're not a slow church around here. Where are the directors? Our four directors real quickly. Four directors from Cassie right over there. Can you directors stand real quickly? Four directors, Jeanette, Tammy, Lamia, and then all of, our, all of our volunteers that help out with the children's ministry. I got four kids, man. I owe you big. I just owe you big time. All of our volunteers that help out with children's ministry, could you stand real quick? All of our volunteers that help out. Incredible team. Yeah, you guys are amazing. Thank you, guys. We have a great crew. Um, Working the, the boards in the back, we've got our media team, Brandon, Robin, Johnny, Jacob, Gio. Could you guys stand up real quick? All of our team that help out with the our media department, Maria, cameras. You guys are awesome. Awesome, awesome team. We're excited because this next year we're going to be introducing, we're going to another level with the media department. We have uh, God just connecting us, bringing 
bringing very talented folks that uh, it's been on my prayer list. I said, Lord, send us the best. We're in San Francisco. We got Twitter up the street. Come on. We got, uh, you know, all kinds of startup Internet companies all around us. And uh, so I'm, I'm just praying, Lord, send us the best. And uh, God's assembling a dream team of the media and arts, and uh, we're excited to have them. Where's Natalia, man, helping us out with videos this week? Where's Natalia? Right over there. You guys are awesome. Hey, Amen. Come on. Then how about all of our team that help out with our ushers, all of our ushers that help us out every week by our lead usher, led by our very own Ben Bittner. Where's Ben? Yeah. Kenton and so many others. Hey, Amen. How about... How about Jim Degnan and all of our prayer warriors that pray every week and help us access the presence of God? We love you guys. Thank you for your faithfulness. Amen. And then we got a greeting team, our hospitality team. Where, where are the greeters? Sam and, yeah, Malika, Tony. We got a lot of folks. And then Danielson, we love you, man. Are you just raising your hand? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we got cafe folks that are helping us out. Where are all the baristas in the house? Lots of baristas everywhere. Yeah. How about our facilities coordinator, Mr. Tony, right over here, oversees all of our operations. Amen. How about our, our maintenance department with uh, the van? Oh, that's me. Thank you very much. And I don't know anything about mechanics, just saying. <laughs> So, uh, if you have a passion for mechanical work, amen. Um, who else am I overlooking here? This always happens where we've got, uh, who? Who are we missing? Who did I not call out? How, how about our uh, interns? Yeah, how about our interns? Amazing interns. Every now and then I got to just borrow Brother Tone, the good brother, to help, with, help us with the security because the brother's just big. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so Tone, let's give it up to Tone and Maisha. We love them. And, uh, and then just the rest of the dream team that you guys just come in faithfully week in and week out. You guys are just here. We love you guys. Give yourself a hand. The dream team. Amen. Love you guys. I'm going to invite... Uh, Nicole and Sam, we have a few more prizes. And then, are the desserts ready already? In the process of? So how about our kitchen crew? Let's give them a hand. <laughs> All right, Sam and Nicole are going to come. And uh, let's start off with the bigger prizes. Some folks are saying, are you saying we should wait? Keep, here, keep people here longer? Is that what you're trying to tell me, Sam? It's Sam's fault, people. I, I was giving you the green light to do it now, but he's insisting that we hold. Is that what you're saying? Whatever you want to do. The way I see it, the longer we wait, the more people go home. Oh. The more people go home, the better chance I got. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, somebody. I'm going to have to preach this thing. Like I need a mic. I hold in my hand. What do I got? Those say 49ers. For, anybody like the 49ers? That was kind of weak. Anybody want some Niners tickets? We are going to pull the numbers. I'm gonna let, it's for the Carolina game. They have to go all the way to Carolina. What day is that on? November 10th. November. A buck 85, that's it. How many? These are only valued at a dollar 85. They are the worst seats you could possibly ask for. How I'm many? T how many tickets are in there, PJJ? Two. Two. Ooh, a mm. date. Leave the kids at home. Take your BFF. Riley, you can't take Dominic. Okay. Y'all ready for this? What you, dun, dun, dun. No, I'm just kidding. Y'all ready for this? I can't rap. He can do it. <laughs> What you got, Grandpa? Let's go. Vamanos. Uh, Everybody got your tickets out? Y'all ready? Go Bam, ahead. I'm going to let you read it. It is 772-762. Oh. oh. Brother Rodney. Rodney in the building. Rodney. Have yourself a merry little before Christmas party. You excited? Give it up for Rodney, you guys. That's awesome. 
Hey, 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 Rodney, remember, remember the first day when you was in here and I said hello to you? And then, remember? Don't listen to him. Don't listen remember? to him. I told you where the water was at, bro. Rude. Rude. Oh, Let's do a fun one. An iTunes gift card. 15 bucks. <laughs> Everybody's like, I want the iPad that goes with the gift card. Just kidding. What you got? Bam. Can you turn that around? Thanks. Seven seven two seven eight one. You got it. Woo! Got you, Hermione, in the building. Let me see that card. Let me. I don't know about this guy. All right, he got it. He got it. Should we do? Should we do? Should we do? No, no, no. They're not ready for that. They're not ready for that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They need a macaroni grill or on the border or Magianos. Chilis. Little what? Chilies. Okay, and chilies. Maybe the other places are better. I don't know. <laughs> what you got? Let's see you over there slipping Bam. stuff in there. Seven, seven, two, seven, four, seven. Hey! hey. Give it up for Becky. Coming out from the East Bay. Let's check this. All right. She's not a liar in the house of God. Amen. <laughs> we gonna do, let's do one more small one. 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 A little one? one? A little one? Let's do one more a little. Small. You got the building. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, let's do a couple Starbucks cards. Wanna do a couple Starbucks cards? She feeling yeah, generous. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm feeling generous. I'm so Maybe generous. you can go on a double date. Or not. It's generosity. Go on a mommy date. Ain't that one of our values? Generosity. That's right. Fun. Generosity. 20 hours later, we will get your number. Boom! Oh my gosh. 772-771. Double portion right here. Woo! She prayed hard. I saw her. She did. She got a double portion, ladies and gentlemen. I'll, I'll take that. How you feeling? How you feeling? I'm feeling all right. What y'all want? To, let's let the crowd let's, decide. Let's, let's let the crowd decide. What do you decide. want? Do you y'all want? want something small or y'all want something big? Should we? Y'all want something big? Should we? Y'all want something big? This is an iPad mini. Something big? Wow. This 16 big, gigabytes. Over here? It includes lightning to use. It includes lightning? <laughs> <laughs> sound it out. That's a... Sound out those words. <laughs> I want this if it has lightning. That's amazing. It has a USB. It's got Bluetooth requirements. So maybe you need to go to AT&T and get a Bluetooth for my husband. Just saying. All right, let's get the numbers. Praying hard. Praying hard. You ready? Everybody ready? Gloria a Dios. Can you? I'm going to have a heart attack. I know, right? Drum rolls. It's not exactly a drum, but. Bam! Hi, upside down. My bad. Thanks. Seven, seven, two. Ooh, seven. There's a lot of sevens in there. Another seven. And a big fat zero. Oh! oh. She is Thrada family coming up big. Is this Gio's other sister? What? No. What's your name? Daniela. Daniela is you. not lying. She got it. That is amazing. Give it up for Daniela. Woo! I don't know. How many more we got in there? We got a lot. We got a lot. We got a lot. We got a lot. All right, let's get some. <laughs> they don't need it? Maybe they want to see a movie. This is what I'm saying here, right? They don't want it? Peyton Manning, right? I'm going to bring this around. I Give me a second here. Sports. Give me a second here. Give me a second here. Lord Jesus. Peyton Manning, right? I'm gonna sit he's down only for this on one. his he's only on his way to his fifth MVP. But what makes him so good is being able to audible on the fly. Right. So basically when things are going one way, he looks and he says, you know what? I'm gonna change this up <gasps> a little bit. I'm gonna have to preach this thing Gasp. in here. The suspense is if you, killing if you, me. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me. <laughs> to Snooze 91. But look. This is what I want to do. If we can get two chairs. No. You think we can do that? Yeah, I think so. Right. I'm pretty strong. Let's get two chairs I'm pretty right strong. here. 
Let's get two chairs. You were gonna carry it with me? Yeah. He needs help. He needs a lot of help. Absolutely, absolutely. Where's your wife? We're gonna set one right there. Yeah, these are pretty we're nice chairs. We're gonna set one right here. Yeah, I wanna call Who's... two people up. Two people. Two people. Two people. By the one, name two. of Marquise Gray. Mm. Catherine Porchia. Yeah, come on up. No, 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 no. Absolutely. We said take the chair. Absolutely. We said take, hold up. Take a seat. We're going to pray a circle around you real quick. I was in take it a with seat. you. I was going to let you go. Take a seat. I was going to let you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hand one mic to Marquise. Me too. No, I can't. One to Catherine. No? All right. You mean we ain't getting Niners tickets? This is ridiculous. It's because we're black. Come on, Sam. Look out for our brother. Um, what's up, everybody? It's Kragen. Welcome to the city. Um, we're here to um, just say a couple of special words and present our friends, John John and Elena with a special gift. Um, hold on one second before you bring it. Just as I was asked to do this and I, I didn't create no speech or anything like that, but I just, anybody knows me, I'm gonna flow from the heart. Um, I'm gonna let my wife say a few things as well. Um, why don't you go first, because I talk too much. Tell mom what you like, say love Jake, John John. Hi, Jake John. Say, love you, John John and Elena. I love you, John John. Oh. <laughs> out of the mouth of the baby, y'all. Out of the mouth of the baby. We really love John John and Elena, the whole family, Erica, Juju, Jaden, E-Dog. Um, this year has been just a ride. It has been an amazing, amazing journey. And... Um, I don't want to go much into our story, but again, most of you know John John very well. Um, he's truly a pastor with a father's heart, and um, he has a heart to mentor, a, a heart, um, as well as Elena, to help women out and to, to build and to grow leaders. And um, our life now is a truly a fruit of John John's ministry. And, and many, of your, many of the people here are fruits of John John and Elena's ministry. And um, we just want to just thank the Lord for them. And, you know, we, nothing's poss nothing is impossible with God, right? And we know none of this would have been possible without God, right? Um, but truly, God used these two to influence us and many others in this room. And we want to make sure that they, that they know we love them. And so we want to present them with a, 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 a gift from the church family just to show them how much um, we love them. They're always giving gifts. We're a generous church, and they're always giving Come on, stand on your feet, y'all. Stand on your feet. Stand in ovation. Come on, show them some love. Show them some Frisco love. So first, this is for the boys. It's for the kids first, I guess. So just for the boys, come on, boys. E-Dog, J-Dog. And this is from the whole church family. Cool, you can open it right now. That's not yours, Kai Kai. Come on. Say, I love you, Jaden and Ethan. I love like Jaden and Ethan. Yay! You're awesome. <laughs> We're getting fired already, man. On a one year anniversary. This, man. Ninja Turtles. And we have some gifts for the girls as well. The girls got their gifts. Erica, say, I love you, Erica. I love you, Erica. And Juju. And Juju. Yay. What the? What the? And from the whole church family, we got both Pastor John John and Elena, brand new MacBook Airs, y'all. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Brand new. Yeah, come on, show some love, y'all. Show some love, y'all. 
Brand new. Oh, come oh, here. Love you guys. We love you guys. We hope you enjoy it. Um, he's gonna email. Both of them are gonna email us through Planning Center now, all week long. Um, just thank you, thank you. Again, this is just a small token of our appreciation for you guys. A gift, a, a money couldn't do it in our with our hearts. Amen. So um, we love you guys. You're amazing. Amen, amen. Thank you. I love you. No, I love you. I love you, Kai Kai. Wow. That was crazy. Crazy family. Man. I'm not sure who put up that. Uh, who came up with that plan, but we're going to fire somebody. Oh, wait, we don't have anyone on staff. Jeez. Man, crazy people. I sniffed Pat involved somehow, some way. He gets his fingers in the mix somehow. Pat, were you involved in this, man? I, I'm just, uh, believe it or not, as a preacher, I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say except to thank you. Thank you, guys. My goodness. Thank you. Wow. Yikes. Um, I don't know. Let's just give out some more prizes. Let's welcome Nicole and Beto or Sam or one of those guys. <laughs> Come on, Bethel. <laughs> All right. I love you guys, man. Comedy hour. <laughs> What's up with that, Holmes? <laughs> K-O-R-I-S, Holmes. Beto got a tan. Slightly. Grew a couple inches, got a little more attitude. Yeah. Just saying. A little sexier. I know you can't say it, but I will. What? Where's your wife at? <laughs> Telling. So, yes, we still have some more prizes to give out. It is just a night of generosity, and I'm excited. Don't be hating either. I see the hate in a lot of people's eyes right now. <laughs> Don't be hating. <laughs> you still want some prizes, or are you ready to go home? Prize, I see prizes over here. They're excited. This table is excited, and I like it. All right, what are we going to give out? Movie, 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 movie tickets. There's some good movies coming out. I'm not going to promote them from here. Don't Google it. Don't do that. What you got? What you got? What I got is a gift Bam. card. Can you stop with the upside downs? 772-713. She's going to have herself a single ladies night out. <laughs> take a couple. Take, call me. We'll go on a day. <laughs> give it up for Jessica. All right, we got Amazon. How many, a I love Amazon. This place is awesome. You can get anything. Diapers. Amazon. What do we got? Give me a number. Give me a number. Give me a number. Give me a number. I don't know. Boom. Backwards, inside out, 772760. 760, all right. What's your name? What's your name? Caleb. Caleb? All right, give it up for Caleb. He's going to Amazon.com. Let me see what else we got. Oh, I think we should pair up. No, you can't do that. Yes, I can. All right. Rude? You don't know me. Honey, keep praying. This is like a date package right here. All right. Starbucks. Going to go and you're going to get your coffee first. Wake up. And then you're going to go see a movie. And then you're going to go eat dinner. Oh, that is that. so sweet. I get that. Date night. Claiming it. All right. What's our number? Who's going on a date night? Gabby's going on a date night. I see it. She's praying. Boom! My Atlanta. Seven, seven, two, seven, one, seven. Who's going out? Tony. Oh, Jeanette Tony and Tony. And Jeanette. They're going out. They're going to have a good night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me check that out. I got you. It's legit. Oh, that's sweet. They deserve it. They're so sweet. Should we? Do a couple more? 
Yeah, I believe we should. What you think? Buffalo Wild Wings, Buffalo 25 bucks. Buffalo Wild Wings, 25 bucks. That's like dinner for one. It's got to go to yeah, a right. brother. Exactly. It's dinner go for to one. A oink, That's all oink, I'm gonna say. oink, oink, oink. <laughs> hey. Are you guys praying over here? I feel like it's all this side of the room. What is going on here? The cool guys in the back not even praying. <laughs> Did I go over your head, Marquis? Andale. This guy does not want you to have dessert. Bam. 772 729. You're getting some wild wings. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations. And let's do, we have a couple left. So you'll have Starbucks and Applebee's. Thomas is in the house. What's up, Thomas? What's up? Cool kid. Let's try. Starbucks and Applebee's. Know. Starbucks and Applebee's. I'm going to let you pick. Ay, Dios mio. If pick. I pick my own, you know, I didn't That's see cheating. it. 772736. Matthew Wilburn. Save this. Are you in college already? You're going to need this. Yeah, there you go, man. There you go. That is dinner for a month. <laughs> All right, we got one more before we do a television. Not ready for this. Starbucks and Applebee's. Bam. Seven, seven, two, seven, three, eight. Gabby. That is amazing. <laughs> we'll go on a date. Call me. Let's see this. I believe her. I just got a slight feeling. I got a slight feeling that she hasn't won a lot of things in her life. Because <laughs> you would have thought she won the Super Bowl. You know what? From she, that reaction. That is how excited you should be. But I like that. About this I right like here. That, though. Let's see. I like that though. This is a 32 inch. Now see, I'm borrowing a TV from Ben and Andrea so I could really use this. I'm just saying. You'll get it back, I promise, next year. We got a 32 inch classic LED. Samsung, HDMI, I don't know. It's fancy. It feels like there's something really in here. Don't knock you it over. Many, I'm not going to touch it anymore. You see how many friends you get when you start giving stuff away? Right? It's people that walk through this door every day and say, hey, you. Now, all of a sudden, everybody know my name. I'll everybody know my name now. What's your name? This is odd. <laughs> The pressure's on you, I'm not picking it. So nobody's going to beat me up after church. I can't figure out what's going on here. What you got? Let's see what I got here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let Juju take the blame oh, for this. Oh, Juju. That's a good I'm going to let Juju take the blame right for this. Pick Go my ahead number. Pick a number. Pick my number. What you got? 772776. Seven, Seven seven two seven seven six. Soap. Who's got it? Marcel, let me see the. Uh, Soap. Five, four. Three. Soap. Two. Soap. Ooh, Juju, you got yourself out of that one. That was no. awesome. What number are we? Three zero. That ain't your number. Go ahead. You want to do it again? Second time's a charm. That was just a joke. That was a JK. It was a pretend number. Seven seven two seven. Seven seven two seven. Five. There was a five in there. I heard it. We'll be back right after some dessert, y'all. All right, this is for real. This is for reals, for reals, though. For reals, for reals, though. Seven, seven, two, seven, five, four. Seven, seven five, five, four. four. I get that in the building. I get that in the building. Is he allowed to have his own TV? Let's be real. Is he old enough to have his own TV? <laughs> it's legit, y'all. It me, is. You Give got it up a marker? for Nathaniel. You got a marker to make sure it's real? Hmm. It's real. You can come get your TV. You need me? It's not pretend. It's for realsies. You need a hand with that? 
The parents said amen. They don't have to get him a Christmas present. No Christmas presents for him. He's set. Hey, I know y'all carrying a lot of like sound equipment. I'll put it in my trunk for now and I'll bring it back. I'm actually closer to Brentwood, so I'll take it. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. okay. Yeah. No, why don't I take it and you come get it from me? Right. Like... I'm going to borrow it. Okay. And give Ben and Andrea their TV back. Okay. Okay. So we have got some awesome, awesome dessert that we are ready to go with. Indulge, enjoy yourselves, hang out, and God bless and good night.